It's been snowing all day. We might get a demonstration while I'm doing this, but I just wanted to show you how early spring flowers and snow interact. I also want to show you why my trees are currently safe from all of these wild temperature fluctuations that we're having. Uh, the fruit trees are no worries, none whatsoever. So we're going to go take a walk around and see what it is that I am talking about here. So Dutch flowers can handle the cold because they're pretty well convinced that that's all the warmer it's ever going to get in the world. <laughs> they're like, better hurry up and bloom before it gets cold again. I'm going to hold this with this hand so I can put this hand in a glove. I only currently have one glove. So the risk with snow and large headed flowers is this falling down thing and getting planted in the mud. Because the weight of the snow landing on the petals, the stems usually can't handle it. Some of them can. Some of them have done just fine through this and not face planted down into the dirt. Over here it's been 50-50 on that particular bunch. Those are the giants. And that's the same thing with the crocuses are similar. Now crocuses similar to the windflower. Let's go look at that real quick. Crocuses are similar to the windflower in the way that they deal with snow and extreme cold. Look at this. Oh, you can still see some of the snow on here. They just close up. Those look like little purple daisies when they're open. And you can see the little bits of snow on their leaves. And they just close the flowers up. No worries, they're like, you can't get me, I'm, I'm hiding. So, they're perfectly happy with this. And... So then, some apples and pears have... Oh, look, my Sharpie's on the ground. Haha, <laughs> I'm gonna get that. Some apples and pears have early bloom times, and uh, that is something that, under normal circumstances, I would be concerned about, but I lucked out and did something pretty intelligent that I didn't know I was doing at the time, which is put these shaded from the afternoon sun. So otherwise they might have bloomed already, but as it is, they're only just leaves a little bit buds and leaves see this one here that's all they are so that allows for the plant not to get as warm and therefore not bloom out as early and therefore neither my apple nor my pear are any concern for this cold snap We've got a bit of leafing on the apple as well. But no flower buds. The flower buds will come. In fact, those shorter stubs might be it. Or they might be tucked inside the leaves. I'm going to have to pay attention to where they actually come from. But they are protected from this cold snap still. Another type of flowering plant is one with very hardy blossoms. Now, plants will fill their upper strata with a sugar-like substance when it freezes because sugar is less expansive when things are frozen than starch, which are the two major things throwing, flowing through the vascular system of most plants. Um, so these are juneberries. And they are also called Saskatoons because they are native and fruit heavily, even in Saskatchewan. So there are really no worries about these little buds getting exposed to the cold. Because they are just so hardy, they legit don't care. This cherry tree also has not budded up with the flowers yet. Let's just take a look, though, because... It's one 
that I'm not as confident with my decisions about how I planted it, etc, etc, but I've never had a problem before. Okay, so we do have flower buds here. This is the only plant that has already put out flower buds. It, in that case, might... Well, this one is more... Um, frost tender than the others, because I, I know that the prunus species which is plums, cherries, peaches, nectarines, stone fruit in general, are the prunus, P-R-U-N-U-S, um, species in the Latin term, are much more sensitive to snow, cold, etc. in their blooms and killing off the reproductive parts of the flower than a Juneberry ever would be. So that one I do have some concerns about. And now this cherry, I don't think it's ready to bloom yet, but it's coming up even earlier. I think it's not ready to bloom because it's not mature yet. So in the long run, this tree might end up being a significant frost risk, which is a, another motivating factor for me to keep it short if I can. But first I have to kind of keep it, like, alive, because it's a very, very struggling little plant right now with its verticillium wilt experience. So, and another fruit hedge that I have here is this little guy, which is, was sold under the name of a um, black currant. However, the fruit are that big, so it's much larger than a usual black currant. And it is not budded out yet at all. So it's also not at risk of... Oh, look! These ones did, though. So we'll see if this particular branch ends up fruiting. That'll be interesting, because it looks like there are a couple of blossoms that aren't open yet, but that does also mean that at least they're... the little... pistil and stamens are protected, so it should still be able to produce a fruit based on that. I won't focus, but you get the idea. So that'll be interesting to see if fruit are produced there. But most of the rest of the plant hasn't created buds yet. So it will be fine. I have never had to test whether or not it's cold hardy. So this is why I'm not stressed about the snow. Not only do I like snow, which I am aware is a little bizarre. I do really like snow, though. Um, not only do I like snow, but uh, the garden doesn't mind it either. So that's what's... Uh, I had some of my recycle blow. Oops. Um, so that's what's going on here. There's no flowers yet on the strawberries at all, so they're not a concern. And all of this is just recently replanted. The daffodils are all doing great. It looks like one, another one of the scented ones open there under the elderberry. And that is how the garden's doing. I also have the hollyhock coming up pretty strong here. I'll be interested to find out if those seeds were the perennial type or the... Uh, biennial type. I was not aware there were two types until this year, so we'll see. And, yep, I hope you're having a very nice day and that your garden is doing as healthy as mine. I've got a very exciting thing happening on Friday. The um, new plant order is supposed to arrive. They're in the mail. So for that, related to the garden, I'm greatly relieved, oops, stepping up over some things here, greatly relieved that it's going to be cold for a while, because it won't get as dehydrated in shipment as it would otherwise. 
So this is great news. I'll have cherry trees down over the cliff. I don't even know if you can see what I'm trying to show you. And um, you probably can't. <laughs> I'll have cherry trees down over the cliff. One in front of the apple and pear. Pawpaw somewhere right in there. Hazelnuts. A hazelnut in the back. And a couple other things. I don't even remember. But I'm probably going to do a bit of an unboxing video because I've never done one of those and it sounds a lot of fun so <laughs> it'll be a very unusual unboxing video. I wish I could video smells because these little ruffly guys smell amazing. They're bred for that. So hooray. <clears throat> Okie dokie. That'll be the end of this video and I hope you're having a very nice Tuesday. The snow's coming down again. It's proven to you that it was snowing. I don't know if you can see it, but it's cute. I like it. I know. I'm weird. Everybody can, like, just get over themselves. One person being happy is good. Oh, tulip. 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 Okay. Bye.